as ye tempt him in the side. May the Lord add a blessing to his already blessed word. Amen. Amen. He's a jealous God. He's a jealous God. Don't send him. He's a jealous God. That's a good God.
to lift you up. We thank you again for another day that thou hast created. But God, we thank you for every blessing and every mercy that thou hast put in this day. For God, you woke us up right on time. Blood still running warm in our veins. Our minds are still of use. And so God, we thank you right now. Now God, bless those that are here, those that are on the way, and those that are watching and will watch. That God somehow will give you the glory that you deserve and will receive a blessing that you have for us today. Now have your way, Lord. In the matchless name of Jesus the Christ, we pray. And all that love the Lord say amen, amen, amen. Good morning, good morning, good morning. In the front of your uh, bulletin there, it is our opening song, This Little Light of Mine.
And so therefore, uh, there'll be no Zoom. If you try to get on the Zoom, you'll find out there'll be nobody there but you. But again, we were thankful for all of you. We're thankful for Reverend Dean for conducting our Zoom lesson. And so therefore, again, we want to uh, be mindful that even during the summer, uh, open up the Bible. Don't let the dust get on it. Keep reading and keep preparing yourself every day. Amen? On next week, we start our 10 a.m. service time. 10 a.m. And again, if you try to come at 11, we might be doing a benediction. Amen? And so we want to be able to encourage everybody to come out. Let's take good opportunity of starting early and so that you can get out and enjoy uh, the summer hours and enjoy Sunday doing some of the things that we like to do. Amen? Again, uh, our summer pantry or food pantry is going to be July uh, 13th and 20th here in the church. If uh, you have any questions, you can see Brother Poole, you can see Sister Rosalind Mims or Sister uh, Ellis, and they can help you with that. Every third or fourth Sunday, we'll continue to collect for our um, uh, Urban League, as we've done for those coming out of incarceration. Again, we want to help them as they come out. We can't talk about people that are coming out without trying to help them to go in the right direction. So again, when you go into Walgreens, uh, Walmart, CVS, any store, dollar store, any of them, and you go down the aisle, and that dollar aisle, collect as many as you can and bring them so we can supply them when they come out. If you have clothes in your closet that you know you're not going back to that size, <laughs> bring them so that we might give clothes to those that are coming out. And in the preparation of the Urban League, they try to prep these people to go out and get jobs as they come back. And so they want to be able to give them a shirt, a dress, pants, tie, whatever it is, so that they, when they go in the interview, they look as they're supposed to look. Amen? Amen. Again, and in uh, August, we're going to be doing a uh, fish fry flea market. That is going to be on August 10th starting at 11 to 4. If you know anybody that is a vendor that wants to sell, please have them contact the church and we will put them in the in touch with the person that is going to oversee it so that, excuse me, we can make sure that they're here on that Saturday. And again, we're already in the preparation of having uh, the fish fry stuff set up and we have some excellent, excellent people that are on the station to cook the fish. So again, we want to support it as much as possible. And again, we're grateful to Sister Vicki stepped out, but Sister Lady is here, and the committee for all that they did last week for our church anniversary. What a great time we had in the Lord. Amen? And so we're grateful, again, for each and every one. And uh, Brother Lee's daughter was here. We're grateful for uh, Sister Devin. She what a magnificent job, job she did. And praise the dancing. And again, so we're grateful that people were willing to come out and to share with us for 95 years. Amen. And so today, uh, I want to call uh, Brother Boya up here. Uh, we have a guest here. And uh, we're going to let him do he. he he also tries to act like he's not a spokesperson, but he did a magnificent job last week. Amen. And we're grateful. He's going to introduce somebody for us and to us, and we're grateful.
the best of them. You know, when it looked like we were losing the game, we had a conversation with him, or more like Coach, Coach Boyer was yelling at him, come on, guys. Um, and it, it brought something special out of them. And hopefully those skills will be apparent in their future life. So we never talked about politics, him and I. And years later, um, we found out my political affiliation and his wife was thinking about running for office. And he said, listen, if you don't run with her, she ain't gonna run. <laughs> well, that made me feel really special. Um, because he knew my character. And he knew that we would make a great team together. And we were more like a family than anything else. So I would like to invite uh, Summit Mayor, Dr. Elizabeth Bacon up. This is a sneak attack. He did not mention that I was going to be in front of all of you today. He just invited me to come to church, and I said I was very grateful for the invitation. I want to congratulate you um, on your 95 years. I'm thrilled to be here, and I'm very grateful that you have such a wonderful congregation. And I also am really excited to see my boy Evan on the drums. So. <laughs> congratulations on 95 years. Thank you for having me. Brethren, be followers together of me, 
and mark them which walk so as ye have us for an example. For we, for many walk of whom I have told you often, and now tell you even weeping, that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ. Amen? Amen. Thus ends our reading. As we continue to stand and our choir prepares to come and song, any man, woman, boy, or girl having the thought, the inkling to come to the altar, you may do so. The altar is the place that we come and lay down our burdens, lay down our troubles, lay down our sadness and our sorrows. It is for us to get rid of and to turn it over. For if we trust in the Lord and believe in Him, the words of the Lord so don't taste and see that the Lord is good. And so we want to turn it over to the Lord. We don't want to walk out of here holding on to the burdens and the sorrows that we've entered in with. No matter who you are, give it over to the Lord. Come on, choir. Father God, let them know that they will be found 
they will be welcome at home if they just call on your name. Yeah. Father God, I look out there right now and I think about what's going on. And I can't help but say thank you right now. For we are standing here on a promise. We are standing here on prophecy that you would never leave us nor forsake us. We should have been down, we should have been gone, but yet you still gave it to us and we are so grateful right now. You brought us a mighty long way. We are standing here based on your word and your word alone that you would never leave us nor forsake us. We serve an almighty God. We are grateful to stand here today. Oh, Father God, continue to bless us. Continue to hold us and keep us. And a special prayer for your church. Oh, not just Pilgrim, but any church that is over in your name. Right now, Father God, we have got to step up as your people, as your children, and go out to a dying world and proclaim that you are God that sits high and looks low. You are God who can sit there and heal the sick, clothe the naked, and feed the hungry. It's time for us to stop sitting down on our faith, but to stand up in your name, to love our brothers and sisters, to be empathetic in our place, to be empathetic in our word, that we might be able to help someone and bring them to you. There are too many people out there who are lost and feel alone. It's time for the church to be what you designed it to be, an open haven for the, for the lost, an open haven for the hungry, an open haven for the sick. Perfect people do not come to church. We come here to strive for that perfect. We come here because we are not perfect, but we are reaching for that mark. Let them know that they can come in and that they are welcome in your house. Change us that we might go out to the world and let them know we are not great because of anything we've done. We are not saved because of anything we've done. We are saved by your love. Yeah. We are saved by your greatness. Yeah. And we are only able to do what we do and only able to be who we are because of you, Father God. Continue to bless us and keep us. Yeah. Allow us to continue to be your people that we might go out and do your work in this world. Yeah. Let the church say amen. 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 amen.
places that people can go for mental health, and I'll tell you why. Um, Reverend Dean is going to give us a prayer of peace, but our prayer this morning needs to be for mental health. I know you saw it when a mother kills her two children. When people are just going off on the deep end shooting people. It's time for us to stop worrying about what people think about us and be more responsive to the needs of the people. I don't I don't I don't know about you, but for whatever reason. That mother tried to blame it on a religious belief. <laughs> Mental health is running rapid, yeah. but the devil is running even more yeah. rapid yeah. in the world. Right. We have to make it not a shameful process to ask for help. Yeah. Whether it's depression, yeah. whether it's something else, loneliness, all of that stuff is there, and we're afraid to reach out and ask for help. And so, I'm going to use your expertise today. The Lord just said to me, "Get deep in water, deep. That's His field." Amen. And you know, you, I know you can't give us all of it, but Amen. give us some things that these people can take with them. Everybody in here knows somebody depressed. Yeah. Everybody knows somebody in here that's going through something. And we now have to, church, as the church, start breaking down that there's no shamefulness to ask for help. Amen? Amen. Amen. So the choir is going to come in song, and after the song, we're coming back with a message for this morning. Amen?
Philippians 3, 14. I press towards the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ. I want to talk about stepping in the right direction. Stepping in the right direction. Brother Mike sings this song. Order my steps in your words. Dear Lord, lead me, guide me. Not sometimes, not when I want you to, but every day. Send your anointing. Lord, just don't anoint me when I want to be anointed. Anoint me every day. Amen. Father, I pray. I pray. Order my steps in your words. We've been talking about this promise of the Holy Spirit. And basking in knowing that the Holy Spirit is with us every step of the way. You can't even get rid of the Holy Spirit if you want it to. Because God's promise is a command that he promised that he would never leave us nor forsake us. At no time is the Holy Spirit not with us because of the promise of God. Because of the word of Christ and the price that was paid on Calvary's cross. You see, even the sinner man's got the promise. And therefore, the difference is that the sinner man just doesn't recognize that he has the promise. And therefore, the promise is always with them. We that believe and understand and know that the promise is with us ought to be elated that God will never let the promise leave us nor forsake us. There is then a need of a full pledge of stepping in the right direction in our life. Things are going to happen in life and we already know that from what we have lived already and what we have seen, we know the devil is always busy trying to prohibit every move from staying on course to make it to heaven. I don't know about you, but, but I want to make it to heaven. I, I want to see God. I want to see the Savior. I, I want to be where they said that we never have to worry about trouble, strife, or problems whatsoever. I, I want to be in that place, that promise. He said that where I am there, he may be. I, I, I want to be in my mansion. I, I want to have my mansion. I want my mansion next to your mansion. I, I want to walk down the streets of God. I, I want to hear David play the harp. I want to hear the angelic choir singing every day. That, that we never have to worry that, that every day is Sunday and the Sabbath has no end. None of us have reached the spiritual maturity yet. No matter how long you have been in the church, and I, I, when I say the church, some people think of uh, the church building, but, but I'm talking about being in Christ. It, it doesn't matter how long you've been coming to the church. It, it doesn't matter what position you hold in the church. But if you're not in Christ Jesus, then you're not in the church. Amen. Therefore, there is a great necessity to keep moving in the right direction. As soon as you believe you made it, you will let your guard down, and, and letting your guard down will allow the devil to get in and misdirect your right direction. You, you see, when people say that I made it, they, they're more trying to take claim about what they did. None of us in here made it without God. You see, God created us in his likeness and in his image. And therefore, God wanted all good things for us. And God wants all good things out of us. So therefore, we must step in the right direction. Uh, let me tell you, belonging to the physical of a building does not get you there. 
You see, you can come to church every Sunday, but if you don't put yourself in the church of Christ, it doesn't matter how much you come on Sunday. It is the word and the will of God and Christ that will get you to where you need to go. You see, you'll know that when trouble comes, trouble won't last always. You, you see, you know that even though you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you'll fear no evil for the Lord is with you. That, that in the midst of it, he'll provide you with food and for shelter. It, it won't matter if they put you in a fiery furnace. You know he'll show up with you in a fiery furnace. You know he'll show up in the lion's den. He'll show up when nobody else is there. He'll wipe tears from your eyes when nobody else is around. All we got to do is keep striving in the right direction. Oh, let me tell you. There's nowhere that I found in the Bible that it says that we're not going to have some trials or tribulations, that we're not going to have tears come down our eyes. It, it, it doesn't mean that friends won't leave you because you believe in Jesus Christ, that mother, father, the Savior, that everything is all lost. But I want to tell you right now that that's why we got to trust in God. we got to believe in His promise and hold on to what He's already don't let anyone fool you that they've reached perfection because they're fooling themselves. But let me tell you that many of us have already seen that one day you can have riches and all of that. And the next day your house, your car, your bank account, and everything else can be gone. You see, when you got Jesus, Jesus is with you every step of the way. All things may be down, but guess what? He's right there with you. That, that if you've ever been down, it's Jesus that picks you up. That, that the Holy Spirit told you, look, don't worry about it. Put your mind back in the right direction. Keep trusting and believing in God, and God will see you through. But let me tell you, titles will never provide you with perfection. You can go to college and get all the degrees you want. But if you ain't got it in your heart, you ain't got it in your mind, and you ain't got it in your soul, you'll never get to where you're supposed to be. You see, wealth will never secure what you really need. You see, you need to have the ability that even when trouble comes, you can lay your head down at night after you've done your prayers and know the Lord will take care of it in the morning. You see, wealth won't buy you security to know that what the world can't tell you, God is already doing it for you. And I want to tell you, just in case you're betting on your good looks, your good looks are going to fade away. You see, you can buy all that you want in the store. You can go to the dentist and get all the pretty teeth you can. You can buy all the wigs, false nails, false teeth, all of that stuff that I got a witness, but all of that will fade away. That's why we must press towards the mark of the high calling in Christ. That's why in everything we do, we need to be stepping in the right direction. Yes, we must move in the right direction, which keeps us in the pace of a higher calling in Christ Jesus. Yes, you see, the person that's in uh, the pace for the higher calling in Christ Jesus Never worries about what people say about you, but know that, that Christ is interceding and advocating for you at the right hand of the Father. You see, every time that somebody tries to strike up their darts of, of evil and all of that stuff, if you keep yourself in pace and you keep striving and stepping in the right direction, you will have already put on the whole armor of God that when the fiery darts come, you'll be able to knock them off. Let, let me tell you, all of us have been down, but thanks be to God, He doesn't allow us to stay down. Paul, Paul writes this letter to the church of Philippi. Paul here in the text, uh, we can start at verse 12 and work our way through. Uh, Paul begins to first tell us that he does not want anybody to think or, or any shape or form to believe he has reached or conquered a spiritual maturity. Let me 
me tell you, that's one of the things that's a falsehood in the church. Every day we must strive to build our spiritual life in Christ. But let me tell you, that's why it's important to pray morning, noon, and night. That that's why it's important for us to teach our children who God is, who Christ is, and what the Holy Spirit does for us. It's important for us to have a personal relationship with, with God the Father, God the Son, and the Holy Spirit. You, you see, what mama has is going to go with mama. What daddy has is going to go with daddy. What grandma, grandpa, whoever it is, is going to go with them. But it's nothing like having your own relationship with Christ himself. <laughs> Paul in no way is trying to make anybody think that he is all of that. But Paul is really trying to tell us that he's still striving and still trying to reach that spiritual maturity. But Paul, having been transformed, went through some great hardship. He, he wasn't always Paul. You weren't always who you are. You see, that's why you hear me say I'm a sinner, saved by grace. That, that we've all fallen short. There's nothing perfect about me. And there, see, I gotta be careful about that Ronald pray before I do. That there's nothing perfect about any of us. You see, all of us got flaws, all of us got downfalls, all of us got all of that, and that's why we need to press the Lord. Paul, or should I say Saul, was evil. The Lord transformed him. And what Paul was doing evil, now Paul got evil done to him. Did y'all see that? Yeah. See, when you're, trans, when you're trying to step in the right direction, when, when the devil has had you, mm. now instead of those things, he's trying to go against you. Yeah. It, it is that, that after he had given himself his life to Christ, after overcoming all of the obstacles, being out there half dead, going blind, all of that kind of stuff, the trouble that Paul had, Paul is moved to a place from being a persecutor to a preacher of the gospel. Yeah. Now, let me tell you something. You do not have to be a preacher of the gospel, but you have to be an ambassador Amen. of the gospel. Oh, uh, let me tell you something. Whenever you go and you're a believer and somebody else starts talking, you ought to join in and let them know, I'm thankful for what he's done for me. I'm grateful how he saved me. Let me tell you something. Don't ever be ashamed of what he's done for you. Don't ever be ashamed of where he's brought you from. That that's why the church, that's why people, we've got to get out of putting people down because they don't look like us, they don't dress like us, they don't act like us. Let me tell you, it is by the grace of God that we are where we are right now. Magazines distort stuff. AI distorts stuff. And it distorts it, and it has made life look as if you have reached perfection. Some years ago, I was in uh, Miami, and we were doing uh, clinics with basketball for kids uh, from all over uh, the state of Florida. And I won't call the player's name, but one of the players stood up, talked about himself. He said, I had made probably over 60 or 70 million dollars. And of course, all the kids were like, ooh. <laughs> but then this next thing is, I have none. I have. No. You see, we got to be careful what the world
world tries to show us and how they try to show us. You, you see, reaching perfection when you got money and fame and some of the most miserable people that I've ever come across. That they're miserable because they think their money makes them good. That, that their fame makes them better than us. But, but the truth of it is that we're all made in the image of God. We're made in His likeness. So none of us are better than anybody else. We're just here and God has blessed somebody more than He's blessed another. It may look that the life you live may be insignificant to that which is falsely shown. But, but I want to suggest today, keep being uh, keep stepping in the right direction. Amen. You see, everything I shared with you, one of my friends, on his way to be a billionaire, beautiful Jack with his initials on the wings, had Mercedes Benz, all of that stuff. But when leukemia struck him, made it through the first, but it came back again and took him away. I remember his wife saying that he had divvied up everything, given it all the way. The, the jet belonged to the company and the cars belonged to the company and the house was to be sold and all of that stuff. He did not take any of it with him. I gotta say that one more time. He didn't take any of it with him. We, we gotta work on that which we can take with us. We gotta work on that. Dr. Charles Spurgeon says, but while the work of Christ for us is perfect, and it were presumption to think of it adding to it. Mm. The work of the Holy Spirit in us is not perfected yet. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Yeah. We still got some work to yeah, do. Yes, we, do. we got some things that we got to get right. Yeah. It is continually carrying on from day to day. Mm. And we will need to be continued throughout our whole life. You see, we got to work on our life with Christ. We've got to work on our souls through Christ. Paul says, I press on. Because Paul realizes that he had not arrived to where Christ wanted him to be. There was not only one option open for him, he had to keep on pressing. Remember I told you, Paul or Saul was the persecutor, and now he being persecuted by the saint. Therefore, there was no turning back for him. Let me tell you something, no matter who we are here today, something is pressing against you. Something is trying to keep you from reaching your goal and objective in Christ Jesus. Something is trying to steal your likeness and your image that God has created Something is going against another book. You see, we've got God inside of us. And the devil is trying to force its way in. We gotta be careful and we gotta keep on stepping towards the mark of a high calling in Christ. It's denoting the application of any power, physical or moral, to something that is to be moved or affected. You see, we need to be moved every day, every minute, every hour, every degree by the Holy Spirit. When trouble come our way, we've got to call on the Holy Spirit. When things don't go right, we got to call. While the Holy Spirit is trying to propel you forward into what God has made and wanted you to be. Sin is still trying to put you and pull you away from God. You see, 
we got to recognize that when people want to argue with us, you got to realize whether the argument is worth even having a discussion. You got to realize that some things are about to pull you out of the right direction. That some things are about to make that day that felt like a great day. You had joy when you woke up. You had peace. You had understanding. Some things are made to steal your joy, steal your peace, and cause you to be discombobulated in your day. Somebody said, well, Pastor, it's like a tug of war. No, it's not like a tug of war. Because as soon as you, 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 me, make up our mind that the direction you're going to go, you change the battle you're in. Let me say it one more time. No weapon. Formed against me. I've already taken the weapon away from what somebody else. Even though, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of that, I will fear. I, I just changed the whole course of what it is. And yet, though my enemy come upon me, they will stumble. Yet though he set me in the presence of my enemy, yet, yet you see. We change the whole course because we're holding on to the promise. We're standing up to what God wants us to do. Yes, when you decide whether you want to lay hold of what Christ has laid hold of for you, Jesus said, uh, "Not my will, but Thy will be done." Once we lay hold of Christ, we do not live in the past. Anymore, let me just stop right there. Stop living of what you used to be. And start striving to what God wants you to be. Now here's the other part. Do not be deceptive of what the future will bring. Don't think all those things I told you, well, all of that, that trouble can come your way. But you need to know that if you keep pressing towards the mark, that regardless of whatever happens, God is going to be right there with you. Let me say, Paul knew that a race is one in the present moment. We got today. We got right now. Right now. Y'all didn't get that. Yeah. We got today. Yeah. But more so we got right now. Yeah. We don't know what this afternoon is going to bring. Right. We don't know what's going to happen when we step out the door. But can I get somebody to say I'm going to hold on. And I'm going to press the Lord. towards the goal for the prize of the upward calling of God in Christ. The prize is the upward calling of God. The, the prize is the call itself. Lady sings the song, he knows. <laughs> I wish I had somebody that I stood that. He knows. My name. It's not the benefit that comes from the call or anything else. The prize is being able to run the race out. You see, he kept you in the race. He's kept you in the run. He's, he's still giving you, even though you've fallen short, he's still giving you the prize. <laughs> so, we got to understand that this is a partnership working towards heaven as our goal. Because it is such a glorious call, it is worth reaching forward for it. 
You see, some people would say, I can't see it. And if I can't touch it, then it's not worth me reaching out for it. But I want to tell you today, you did not reach out early this morning to get yourself a book. You did not reach out during the week to make sure that you were covered and your family was covered and all those that are in your prayer realm. You, you didn't do that, but God did it for you. Yes. You didn't know whether a trouble was going to come. Storms, trees fell, and yet nothing has happened to you. Everything stepping in the right direction when it comes to God, Christ, and the Holy Spirit. Yeah, yeah. I want to share this story with you. Old farmer had a goat. Goat fell deep in a hole. So the farmer decided, I'm going to throw a rope down and I'm going to hook him and pull him up. But every time he threw the rope down, the goat would eat the rope up. <laughs> he went over and he tried talking with the goat. Saying, listen, you got to help me get you out of this situation. Amen. So he threw another rope down and the goat ate it up again. The farmer, perplexed by how he was going to get the goat out, decided, I'm going to try it one more time. Thank you. Let me just tell you, for some of us, it didn't work the first time. Some of us didn't work the second or the third time. The farmer being frustrated in trying to get his goat. He came to a conclusion that he would just bury the goat in the hole. And he began to throw the dirt in the hole. And he never looked in the hole again because uh, he thought it was a lost cause. And I want to tell you today, the world looks at us and thinks we are a lost cause. But he kept on throwing the dirt in uh, without looking. And I want to tell you today that when uh, you press toward the mark of a higher calling, yeah. uh, that sometimes people are going to count you out and they're going to try to bury you uh, right where you are. Uh, but I want to tell you today is that the more dirt that the farmer threw in uh, and he began to realize that, that the goat was going to die there, uh, he then decided that he was going to go over and take one look in the hole. Uh, but I need to tell you today that when you press toward the mark of a high calling, uh, that every time the devil tries to do something to you, uh, this goat did what nobody thought he would do. Uh, he shook the dirt off of his back uh, and he packed it under his feet. Uh, and the more dirt the farmer threw in, uh, the goat began to step on it. Uh, and the goat got to a point uh, that when the farmer looked, uh, the goat jumped out the hole uh, and he ran on about his business. Uh, I stopped by the day uh, to tell you uh, that when people throw things at you, uh, when the devil tries to count you out, uh, shake it off uh, and keep pressing on.
doors of the church are not open. For anyone who's ready to accept Jesus Christ as their Savior. Today is a good day. If you're online, you can put it in the chat. If you're in person, you can walk down.
having some trouble with, don't be ashamed. You know, one of the detractors that have impeded our current student population that I'm working with is stigma. They think that if I am experiencing a concern, first of all, no one wants to hear about it. And then secondly, I need to keep it just to myself because people might think I am weak. People might think that I cannot be the independent entity that I need to be. But I tell them, look, everybody has a hard time. You know, it's no shame in having something that has impacted you. But if you do the work, good things can happen. And so um, I guess I'm going to share with you three uh, iconic organizations that I both belong to uh, at the national level, the state level, and then an uh, uh, organization that's very near and dear to my heart that I'll share with you. So the first one is the American Psychological Association. You could just Google APA, www.apa.org, okay? American Psychological Association, that's number one. They have a slew of articles that you might wish to read that talk about pertinent things that are going on nationally in terms of mental health, okay? That's one. Second one is another organization that I belong to, the uh, NJPA, all right? New Jersey Psychological Association. Uh, they're actually uh, happen to be based in West Orange, um, but so close by, right? Close by. Um, but uh, it's a wonderful organization where you have a group of psychologists from young to old, those that are trained and whatever. And the reality is that what a wonderful organization it is because you go to that site, it'll tell you things like um, how you might make a determination if you're experiencing anxiety, depression, and substance abuse, uh, use issues. It'll also tell you if you wanted to uh, pursue uh, a course of action in terms of individual psychotherapy. That here's the cool part. The only good thing that, as a result of COVID, is that virtual therapy came into existence big time. Okay? And so, whether it's done virtually or whether it's done in person, more and more people are coming back in person, by the way, because they miss that contact that they had with the therapist that they're working with. But uh, New Jersey Psychological Association, another organization that will give you a slew of information. And then the last one is an organization that I had the privilege of being the president of, uh, let's see, 2010 to 2014. That's the New Jersey uh, Association of Black Psychologists, okay? Uh, again, you can uh, Google that, New Jersey Association of Black Psychologists. And uh, I also belong at the national level, okay? We have one there. Um, so that if you have issues that are related to matters that, you know, you want to know that you have someone who kind of walk in your shoes, um, and you could find a therapist that way, right? They have a psychologist located. They also have that with NJPA, by the way. Okay, so the services are out there. And the good thing is that you just need to know to um, understand that sometimes terrible things happen. But we're going through some very perilous times right now. And the reality is the help is out there and all you have to do is have the courage to try. So when I consult with individuals, I tell them to uh, give it three tries. I always say three because first time is just an intake, right? But then the second and third time, all of a sudden you're beginning to talk about the things that you need to talk about. Uh, uh, and then you can address. And also understand that we call it our psychological orientation. Understand that there are different ones. The reason why I'm mentioning that to you is that you need to know the person that you're going to be going to. Um, we're not all the same. We have different types of orientations. And so what that means is that based upon the orientation of the psychologist, that's what they're going to give you. So if you know that you'd like someone who's going to be very collaborative, very understanding, so I'm a proponent of uh, 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 cognitive behavioral therapy, CBT, that's my thing. Okay. But it works very well for anxiety, depression, and things like that. But don't fret. Please understand, you might think, well, here I am down now. So I'll share with you that formerly I provided services to our medical school students in the state of New Jersey. I 
and also to uh, medical personnel at various hospitals. So I'm talking um, physicians throughout all walks of life, um, attorneys, um, firefighters, police officers, things like that, and yes, little old students and us here at Pilgrim Baptist Church. But you know what? Help is out there. But you gotta pick up the phone, be with someone, a supporter, or something like that. And the reality is, give the opportunity a chance. America is hurting big time. I see it each and every day. Every Monday, just so you know this, every Monday, I do uh, clinical evaluations for people who were uh, contemplating suicide. That's heavy when I read the stuff that they went through. You know? And I'm thinking, there's a better way, right? I'd rather be on this side of the land of the living rather than six feet under. Okay, so understand that um, New Jersey is hurting, America is hurting, and we need to do something about it. Right? We can't go on like this. We need to put, we need to arrest the things that are impacting uh, our student population, our adult population, our older population, because we were created to live a life more abundantly. And we can't do that if we are using things that are stealing our ability to maintain our consciousness levels, all right? So uh, I'm gonna take my seat. Uh, if you ever have any questions to the parishioners of Pilgrim Baptist Church, you know where I sit, right? I'm uh, and I'm gladly answering answer your questions. Uh, but help us out there. That's the key thing I want you to know. And uh, bless you all. So one of the things we're going to need to work on, we've, we've got a connection to Overlook is that's what we're going to work on mental health. We ourselves <clears throat> need to be mentally strong. Things happen to us and we need to be mentally strong. We need to not only depend upon the Holy Spirit, but we need to work on ourselves. You have that Paul says this in the present. Already know something is going to push against you doing the right thing. And so we will work on that. Um, Mayor, thank you so much for coming. Yeah, we appreciate you. Those doors, those doors are always open to you. Anything that we can help in the City of Summit, please let us know. We will be glad to join in and partner to make this a better place. Reverend Dean is going to come. She is going to give us a prayer of peace and a prayer for mental health and our benediction. Um, up front is our offering. Again, um, please come. I'm going to ask Brother DeBose to come up at the end. Again, please give so God can bless us and bless you according to his will and his riches and glory. Reverend Dean is coming.
You want to care about me. We need to help one another. We need you in a mighty way. There are many out there dealing with mental health. Many out there have challenges. Don't know how to handle their situations. People killing their children this week. It makes me sad. And I wonder how do they feel? But there's help out there. Yes. We've learned that you can actually Google and find out where you can go for your problems. Our lives are precious. Our little kids are precious. The guns need to be put down. I don't know who owned all the gun shops, but it certainly wasn't my family. So I'm asking in the name of Jesus right now, grant us peace and allow us to be a loving world. I believe it can happen. I really do. So I pray every day for peace. Pray for wicked people. I know you're able. Yes, you are. And I know you're willing. Yeah. Receive this benediction. May the grace of God and the love of God and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit yes. rest, rule, and abide with you now and forevermore. And the church said, Amen. Go in peace.